I'll continue the discussion with um, uh, transient and absorbing probabilities. That is your reducible marker chains. So now here, for example, look at this transition diagram. So there are four states, and you see that from one you can either come back to one or go to three. But then three, uh, once you reach three, then the probability of returning to itself is one. So therefore, this is a certain event. So once uh, the process from one goes to three, the process will uh, stop there. Similarly, from 1 it can go to uh, 2 and then from 2 if it transitions to ulti finally to 4, then 4 is an absorbing state and so your uh, process will again stop here. Right? And similarly 2, so you can see that from 2 also you can go to 1 and 3 or 2 to uh, itself and then 2 to 4. So, 1 and 2, uh, uh, no I saw 1 and 2, this should be 1 and 2. 1 and 2 are transient and 3 and 4 are 3 and 4 are absorbing right that you can immediately see just by uh, you know looking at the transition diagram that once and of course uh, you can see that um, uh, over a short period uh, 1 and 2 1 and 3 will 1 and 2 will be visited right because they are transient so for a while uh, the process may go from 1 to 1 itself or from 1 to 2 then 2 to 1 uh, that may go on for a while or 2 to 2, but then ultimately the moment it uh, the process transitions to either 3 or 4, it stops. Right? So, therefore, for over a short period of time, uh, 1 and 2 will be visited, but ultimate, ultimately the process will either st um, enter state 3 or uh, 4 and then stay there. So, the process will end. Okay? Uh, and so, now I, I, using this, I want to talk about absorbing probabilities. So, for example, the question that questions that arise. So, I have just first written the first question, even though this is plural, we will talk about the other question after this. So, which absorbing state will be entered? Of course, uh, here again, uh, we will only talk in terms of probabilities, which absorbing state or what is the probability. Now, uh, just to uh, point out the difference uh, uh, between uh, the absorbing probabilities and the uh, steady state probabilities. You see, now just look at this example. Um, so, okay. what I am saying is that we will answer this question by computing absorbing probabilities. And uh, so, before I start uh, talking about the method for computing the absorbing probabilities, let me just give you a feeling what we are talking about. See, here if you um, are in state 1, then the probability of transitioning to 3 um, seems higher than uh, transitioning to 4, because uh, well, okay, you might say that uh, the 1 of course, in, if, if it happens in 1 step, then this probability is half or uh, then it can happen that uh, you know you can go to uh, itself and then transition. So, that will be uh, also then that will be, uh, so this will be half plus half into 1 by 4. So, let us just compute this in two steps. And then um, if you, uh, so transitioning, if you start in 1, then transitioning to t 3, let us say uh, in two steps. So, half plus half into 1 by 4, but if uh, you are in 2. So, computing the transitioning, uh, if you transition from 2 to 3, uh, we cannot do it in one step. So, the two step transition probability will be, so the path will be from 2 to 1, from 2 to 1 and then 1 to 3. And so, this would be 2 to 1 is uh, 1 by 3 and 1 to 3 is half. So, 1 by 3 into half will be 1 by 6. So, this is the probability, two step transition probability of going from 2 to 3. Fine. I mean, uh, again the, the example that I am trying to take is, so half plus half into 1 by 4 will be how much? Uh, this will be um, 1 by 2 plus 1 by 8, which comes out to be uh, 5 by 8. Right? Uh, you are connected uh, to 3 from 1 directly. So, uh, this is what we will try to bring out through the uh, computation of the absorbing probabilities, that uh, the prob it looks like that uh, transitioning from 1 to 3, uh, the probability would be higher uh, if you are in state 1. And uh, if you are in state 2, then the probability should come out to be uh, lower than that. So, um, in other words, what we are trying to make a case for is that 
uh, the absorbing probabilities are not independent of the uh, starting probabilities. That means, uh, the starting state, uh, whereas uh, steady state probabilities we saw. Uh, so, unlike steady state probabilities for an ergotic process, the absorbing probabilities depend on the starting state. See, steady states were independent of where the system started. Okay. And therefore, we would could compute you know simply pi equal to pi p and it did not matter where the system was, because remember the all the rows of the matrix uh, became uh, 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 identical, right. But in, in the uh, absorbing probabilities, it will depend on where you are starting and this is what we want to make sure. Like okay, this will, uh, now we will ultimately when we compute the probabilities, we will show that uh, you know the absorbing probability when you are in state 1 uh, to 3 is higher than when you are in state 2. And similarly for 4, it will be higher when you are in 2 uh, than when you are in 1. So, we will show, because here uh, we will have to then let us say th I take 3 steps, 4 steps, 4 transitions, then I can show you that the numbers here when you in state 1 transitioning to 3 will be, uh, will have a higher value than uh, uh, transitioning from 2 to 3. So, let us see, it will come out. Uh, so, let me make these uh, uh, definitions. Uh, a i j is the probability of reaching the absorbing state j from state i, where i is a transient state. Okay. We want to compute this. Now, of course, one way is that you can uh, use the first passage probability. So, f i j, so that means, for the first time you transition from i to j in n steps and then you sum this up from n 1 to infinity. Now, this is not computationally efficient, not computationally efficient, right because we will have to compute all the higher powers of uh, the transition matrix and then we want to compute uh, the f i j n s. So, uh, an alternate method and this should look familiar, because we have already used this kind of argument. So, now what we are saying is that, uh, if you want to compute a i j, then the transition either takes place in one step. That means, in that case the probability is p i j. So, this is the probability of transitioning from the uh, transient state i to the absorbing state j. So, then it, this is p i j plus or i transition from i to another uh, transition state transient state k. So, that probability will be p i k and then a k j will be the ultimately uh, transitioning from the transient state k to the absorbing state j. So, uh, this will be uh, this number with this probability and this is the probability of transitioning in one step from i to j. So, this is the argument. right? Now, uh, a complete set of linear linearly independent equations will be obtained if the same argument is applied to each transient state. So, that means, here I have done it for i. So, uh, the whatever the number of transient states from each of them, I will try to find out this probability of transitioning to the absorbing state j. right? And then I will have a complete set of uh, linearly independent equations and uh, uh, we will uh, then uh, solve for the a i j's and then uh, we will get the. Uh, so, we will be able to answer the question that uh, which absorbing state will be entered uh, in, a, in the sense that you will uh, say that uh, uh, a particular absorbing state will be entered with this much probability starting from this state. So, this is the, this is the way we will be able to answer that question. Right? So, now let us uh, just uh, take the di transition diagram. So, we are considering this process and if you write out the equations, then you see from uh, one transition uh, state 1, you want to go to absorbing state 3. Then, uh, if you write out these equations, it will be p 1 3. Either you do it in one step or you go to the trans, uh, transient state 2 p 1 2 and then a 2 3 or you uh, come back uh, follow the loop p 1 1 into a 1 3. So, this is your uh, equation when uh, you want to write down for a 1 3. Similarly, you can write it down for a 2 3. So, this will be p 2 3 plus p 2 2 a 2 3 right. From 2, you can either transition to 3 in one step uh, p 2 3 or p 2 3 in our case will be 0 right or uh, the you will have to go from 2 to 2 loop and again a 2 3 uh, uh, there will be a 2 3. So, you come back to itself and then a 2 3 the pr uh, probability of transition from 2 to 3 then or you go from 2 to 1 and then you go to from 1 to 3. So, this is these are the two equations. Now, if you substitute for the p i j s, we obtain um, 
uh, these two equations, right? And you can see that uh, here uh, the variables are a 1 3 and a 2 3, right? Because this is 0 as I said, p 2 3 there is no arc from 2 to 3. So, uh, you have two unknowns and two uh, equations. So, we should be able to uh, solve for um, a 1 3 and a 2 3 here, right? Okay. So, uh, see uh, if you look at these equations from here, if you bring a 1 3 here, it will be 3 by 4 a 1 3 equal to half plus 1 by 4 a 2 3. And here, uh, because this is 0, so you bring a 2 3 here. So, this will be 2 by 3 a 2 3, which is equal to 1 by 3 a 1 3. So, that immediately gives you 2 by 3 a 2 3 equal to 1 by 3 a 1 3 gives you a 2 3 is half a 1 3. And now, if I substitute for a 2 3 in terms of a 1 3 in the second equation, which was 3 by 4 a 1 3 is equal to half plus uh, 1 by 4 into 1 by 2 a 1 3. Right? So, then I get the uh, equation for the value of a 1 3, which is <coughs> 3 by 4 minus 1 by 8 a 1 3 is half that is 5 by 8 a 1 3 is half. So, therefore, I get the value of a 1 3 as 4 by 5. So, once my a 1 3 is known as 4 by 5, I can compute a 2 3. So, you know even from here only one could have concluded what I was trying to show you, but of course, it would have needed at least 2 to 3 you know computations of 3 or 4 paths to get you to this that a 2 3 would be half uh, less than a 1 3. The probability of uh, reaching the absorbing state 3 from 2 uh, is smaller than the probability of reaching uh, 3 from 1. And you know, maybe you can say that the intuitive feeling looking at the diagram, uh, because you have a direct connection here and here you will need at least 2 transitions to come here. So, therefore, um, this was the feeling which you can now uh, sort of validate by uh, doing these computations. So, therefore, a 2 3 comes out to be 2 by 5 which is less than 4 by 5 and therefore, it is less than a 1 3. Now, uh, certainly um, a 1 3 plus a 2 3 will not be equal to 1, because we are not sure whether uh, uh, we will be. Uh, uh, yeah, So, a 1 3 plus a 2 3, yes, because uh, you know we do not know whether we will from 1, we will definitely um, uh, uh, reach the absorbing state 3, you may also reach the absorbing state 4. So, therefore, uh, these two probabilities will not add up to 1, not necessarily. Okay. Um, but if you fix the um, initial state, uh, then the system will enter one of the absorbing states. If you fix the initial state, that means, if I simply say that um, uh, my system is in uh, state 1, uh, then of course, a 1 3 plus a 1 4 will have to be 1 or if my system is known to be in uh, state 2, then uh, I must transition to either 3 or 4 ultimately. So, therefore, a 2 3 plus a 2 a 2 4 will have to be 1. Right? So, if you know this, then I can immediately compute because I have already computed a 1 3 and a 2 3. So, then a 1 4 will be 1 by 5 and a 2 4 will be 3 by 5. Uh, right? And so, here again um, the same uh, thing gets validated that your a 1 4 is less than a 2 4. So, the probability of transitioning from 2 to uh, 4 is higher than tr uh, transitioning to 4 from 1. Let me just make this 1. Okay. This is the whole idea. Right? Now, a 1 4 and a 2 4 I could have also obtained uh, uh, just as I uh, wrote down the equations for uh, a 1 3 and a 2 3. So, the same way I would write down the equations for a 1 4 and a 2 4 and I would compute them. Right? Okay. So, um, this is what now uh, this, this is the method for computing the um, absorbing uh, probabilities and as we have seen that these probabilities will depend on uh, where the system is uh, and, and unlike the steady state probabilities which are independent of the starting state. Okay. Now, let us just generalize this process if I now call the A as the matrix of these transition probabilities, then uh, here uh, your I will vary, uh, I mean transition probabilities from uh, transient states to absorbing states. Then uh, I will be the, the rows of the matrix are the, uh, you know these vary over the transient states and J varies over the uh, absorbing states. Right. 
So, the columns correspond to the uh, absorbing states and this. So, for example, in this case uh, it is 2 by 2. So, in this case your matrix will be 2 by 2 and you can see that if I wrote down the equations for A 1 4 and A 2 4 also, then I will have a matrix here corresponding to uh, all these um, the prob absorbing probabilities that I want to compute. So, then in that case uh, the system would have been written as uh, the matrix A and this will consist of remember uh, the R is the um, matrix consisting of transitioning from a transient state to a absorbing state in one step you are writing. So, P i j's. So, these are so therefore, R is a sub matrix of your transition matrix P which has the same dimension as A and the rows of course, correspond to the transient states and the columns correspond to j because you are transitioning from a uh, transient state to a uh, uh, absorbing state in one step. So, therefore, R is exactly uh, the uh, sub matrix of P of the same dimensions as A. right? Then we wrote down Q A. So, remember this was the uh, 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 this will consist of the uh, transition probabilities from a transient state to another transient state because we were writing. So, either from I to J you did in one step then those probabilities are here or you go went from i to k another transient state and then from k you went to j finally. Okay. So, i to k this is trans, uh, transitioning from a transient state i to a transient state j k. So, q will be that matrix right? and since uh, the columns here are transient uh, states. So, uh, and the rows of a are transient states. So, this matches. So, this is compatible and this will be your uh, system of uh, linear equations written in a matrix form when you want to compute the um, absorbing state probabilities right okay and so uh, uh, so let us see so here for example if you bring to this side it will be i minus q times a equal to r so we comp continue with the computation of uh, through this matrix uh, we will and we will look look at the uh, entries of uh, what what do we mean by so, in other words it will be i minus q a is r. So, a will be i minus q inverse r and i minus q inverse uh, will exist. Okay. So, i minus q a is r. So, this implies that a is i minus q inverse r. Right. So, you see here um, a represents the uh, probabilities of reaching uh, an absorbing state from a transient state. And so, when we set up this equation a valid one, then uh, th there must be a solution to this system. So, that is what we are saying. So, therefore, i minus q and it is a unique solution. So, therefore, uh, i minus q inverse exists that is what we are trying to say. So, I am giving the argument in this way. Normally, you try to first show uh, analytically that uh, the matrix is uh, non singular and hence the solution exists, but here we know that the system will ultimately settle down into one of the absorbing states. So, these probabilities are finite and therefore, um, uh, the solution exists and hence i minus q must be invertible. So, this is the whole idea. So, the stars equation has a solution has a unique solution. So, i minus q inverse must exist. And uh, now, we have interesting interpretations of the elements of i minus q inverse also. And as I said, uh, the questions that keep arising, we will go on answering them. And in between, we will also look at the interpretation of the elements of i minus q inverse. So, the second question that uh, arises is, how many times a transient state will be occupied before absorption occurs? So, now the second question is, how many times will a uh, transient state will be occupied before absorption occurs, because uh, obviously, uh, this is um, uh, you are talking of a reducible Markov chain and so you want to know uh, how many transitions on the average uh, will go uh, continue before uh, uh, absorption occurs and the system uh, stops. So, this is the question mark right. And so, uh, for each particular uh, transient state we want to answer the ask this question. So, the, uh, and surely this is a random variable depending on the starting state right. How many times uh, uh, transient state will be occupied again is a random variable and it will depend on what is the starting state. Right? So, let us define <coughs> uh, E i j as the mean number of times that transient state j is occupied given that initial state is i. So, remember when computing your m i j's which was your uh, uh, mean uh, 
time for transition from i to j in the ergodic case. Then we also talked about the same thing while computing your um, f i j's and now uh, and then uh, the absorbing states, uh, the probabilities of going from a transient to a absorbing state a i j's. Uh, we were using the same argument, which we will uh, use here again to compute to side, write down uh, you know uh, the equations relating these uh, various e i j's, which are mean number of times that a transient state j is occupied, given that the initial state is i. So, here uh, this is of course, uh, uh, transient state i is a transient state again. So, i to j. So, um, when i is not equal to j, then of course, you will go to uh, i to k and then k to j. So, this will be the mean number of transitions that you um, need for transition from k to j and this is uh, the probability of transitioning in one step to i to k, when i is not j and this summation will be over all transient k's. Right? So, this is one set of equations. The other would be uh, if i is equal to j, then you are computing e i i. So, it will be uh, uh, you know, one step you can go from i to i you transition from uh, in one transition to uh, from i to i. So, therefore, number of transitions is 1 plus you again transition from i to k, where k is transient and then from k to j. So, the mean number of times so, the same argument uh, continues. And so, in matrix form these equations, because now we have these relations for all i to j and this is from i to i. So, the same uh, dimension as q. So, the relationship is that E is equal to i plus q e. And so, here now uh, your E is actually nothing but i minus q inverse. And this is what I wanted to say that you know you can relate the elements of uh, i minus q inverse and give them a meaning. Um, and let us just look at the entries of i minus q inverse uh, for the example that we have uh, we were discussing just uh, with four states where two were transient and two were uh, absorbing. So, um, so, in that case your r was half and 0 and 0 1 by 3. This was you know going from uh, 1 to 1 and this was uh, going from 3 to 3, uh, sorry 2 to 2. Uh, 1 and 2 were transient and 3 and 4 were absorbing. Right? And then q was uh, the matrix uh, of uh, transitioning from uh, uh, transient state to a absorbing state. So, uh, the diagram uh, you can just refer back to the diagram and so this will be uh, 1 by 4 and 1 by 4. That means, from one transient state you could go to uh, 3 in the probability is 1 by 4 or you could go to uh, uh, so, sorry, sorry. I will just repeat this. Uh, Q is basically from transient. So, this is 1 and 2 and this is 1 and 2. I am sorry. So, uh, 3 and 4. Uh, maybe I will just again just draw the figure. So, this was 3 and this is 4. Yeah. And so, you had this, you had a loop here, then you could come here and you could go there. This was your diagram. Sorry. So, um, uh, I should uh, be have been careful. Yeah. So, uh, Q is uh, just the um, matrix consisting of where the rows and the columns both correspond to uh, transient states. right? And so, in this case, this loop had probability 1 by 4 and then you could go from 1 to uh, 2 also with probability 1 by 4 and uh, from 2 you could go to itself with 1 by 3 and this was also and then you could go from 2 to 1 probability 1 by 3. Right? Okay. Uh, so, you can just verify these numbers. Okay. Now, uh, so i minus q will be this matrix and therefore, i minus q inverse will be um, 8 by 5, 3 by 5, 4 by 5 and 1 by 5. We can, uh, okay. and then uh, we also computed, uh, we made these computations. So, your matrix A, which is i minus q inverse times r is this matrix and this um, uh, agrees with our calculations that we had done, right? 4 by 5 and 2 by 5. So, um, we said that this is higher than this and that this is higher than this and these computations were all there. Okay. So, uh, that is there, but now let us look at the elements of i minus q inverse. So, look at uh, E 2 1 for example, because this is our matrix E. So, E 2 1 is this okay, 4 by 5. Now, this is the mean number of times that state 1 will be occupied before absorption occurs, given that 
the initial initial state of the system was 2. Okay. So, you starting from 2, uh, you want to find out the probability that you would be uh, uh, going on uh, finally, going to an absorbing state. And, <coughs> but in the meantime, the mean number of times that state 1 will be visited before absorption occurs. So, that is 4 by 5. So, now you know it will be interesting you can just take up any uh, physical process that uh, um, you know uh, can be modeled as uh, uh, this reducible uh, Markov chain, which has only uh, transient states and absorbing states and then you can try to give meaning to uh, these numbers. right? And then if you add up now for example, E 1 j, where um, uh, yeah, this is mean number of total transitions before absorption occurs given that the system was initially occupying state 1. So, now you want to compute these uh, mean number of times total transitions before, because remember we computed 2 1 here, then I could have also computed E 2 2, right? E 2 1 or, or for example, here if your starting state is 1, then you go to 3 or to 4. So, this is um, so, we said that E 2 1 is 4 by 5, which is the mean number of times that state 1 will be occupied before absorption occurs, given that the initial state of the system was 2. So, starting from 2, then um, I will occupy 1 uh, on the average 4 by 5 times before absorption occurs. Right? And similarly, um, uh, now if you add up E i j's, uh, sorry E 1 j over j, which is again transient. So, this will give you the, that means, starting from state 1, then uh, both the transient states will be occupied before uh, absorption occurs. So, this will give you, uh, so therefore, for example, when this is 1, then in, the, in this example, it will be E 1 1 plus E 1 2. So, mean number of times a state 1 is occupied or state 2 is occupied, both are transient. So, this total will give you the uh, total transitions before mean number of total transitions before absorption occurs, given that the system was initially occupying state 1. Right. Okay. So, starting from state 1, uh, how many mean number of transitions can occur before absorption occurs. Right. So, here this was a particular element, which is 2 1. That means, starting from 2, how many times will mean number of times uh, 1 will be occupied before absorption occurs. Now, you are saying uh, starting from 1, what is the total number of uh, mean number of uh, transactions or transitions which will occur before absorption occurs. So, it will be E 1 1 plus E 1 2, because either 1 can be occupied or 2 can be occupied before transition before absorption occurs. So, that will be 11 by 5. And in the case when you are starting from 2, then 2 1 plus E 2 2, that probability is 1. Uh, sorry, the mean number. Uh, again, it is not probability, it is the mean number of total transitions. So, when starting from 2, it will be 1 okay? and this number is 11 by 5. So, starting from 2, that means it is faster. Uh, the absorption occurs faster, mean number on the average, that is what we are saying. Right. So, see the uh, question that we had answered was that um, when will starting from state 1, which is one of the transient states, how many transitions before absorption occurs. So, therefore, uh, as so this, when we are looking at the elements of i minus q inverse, so this is E 1 1 plus E 1 2, because either absorption will occur from state 1 or absorption will occur from state 2. Right. Uh, so, therefore, uh, you add up the two num uh, elements uh, of i minus q inverse and this comes out to be 11 by 5. Similarly, you can find out if you started from state 2, then uh, how many transitions uh, occur um, the, the average before uh, you transition before you go to an absorbing state. So, that sum will be E 2 1 plus E 2 2 and therefore, uh, so that was you know uh, I was just I thought I will just emphasize again the um, interpretations of the elements of I minus q inverse. Okay. Now, um, a different question this is suppose you specify an absorbing state. Okay. And then you want to know how many transitions will occur before the specified absorbing state is occupied. Okay. So, this is also because that will give you an idea as to how long the process will continue. And um, before, because once the absorption occurs, before once you occupy the uh, an absorbing state, then your process is over, right? Or it will just continue to uh, stay in that same situation, okay, same state. 
So, um, and of course, this question will arise if there are more than one absorbing states, because otherwise if there is only one absorbing state, then you know that ultimately your process will reach that state and your process will stop or will come to an end. So, if there are more, the, if, if there is only one absorbing state, the question can be answered by a mean first passage time. So, that means you will ask the question that starting in state i, in the transient state i, uh, how many transitions on the average before you reach the state j. j may be any state. So, if it is there is only one absorbing state, you can find out your uh, first me, uh, mean first passage time f i j and that will be uh, the answer to your question. But if there are more than one absorbing states, then final transition will occur to only one of them, but you do not know. It is not known to which one of them and therefore, the mean first passage time uh, can be infinity in this case, because you do not know to which absorbing state you will go. So, and once you reach one absorbing state, the other one will uh, not be visited ever and therefore, uh, the uh, first mean passage time will go to infinity. So, therefore, um, uh, here when you have more than one um, absorbing state, then you need to uh, compute, uh, make some computations to be able to answer this question, that how many transitions will occur before the specified absorbing state is occupied. Right? So, um, what we will do is, in that case, we will compute the conditional mean first passage time. That means, given that you are in a particular state, then we want to know. So, mean first given that passage has occurred to an absorbing state, right. So, uh, that, that is what you are saying uh, here that you are specifying the absorbing state and then uh, you are. Uh, uh, so, the mean conditional, uh, the conditional mean uh, first passage time is the, what we need to compute. So, uh, uh, given that uh, you are going to be occupying the absorbing state, let us say j, then you. So, um, here you are uh, defining this m i j as the conditional mean passage time, mean first passage time, it should be um, mean first passage time from i to j. So, let m i j denote this number and you, this is different from the m i j the mean uh, number of transitions required for going from i to j, when you were considering the ergodic process, uh, when all states were recurrent. So, that m i j is different from this one. So, here we are saying this is the conditional mean first passage time from i to j. So, uh, you are uh, occupying state i and you know that and you want to uh, transition to state j, which is a uh, which is an absorbing state. Okay. So, now here we will write the following equations. So, A i j remember was your the matrix A that we had computed uh, to compute the absorbing probabilities. So, then A i j is the probability of uh, tra uh, transitioning from i to j, i is a transient state, j is a absorbing state, then m i j as we have said conditional mean first passage time from i to j. Right. So, you are occupying state j then this can occur either in one step. So, 1 into a i j right and then here it will be uh, you may not transition to j right away. So, you will transition to uh, some k and uh, p i k into a k j. So, k will again be a absorbing state. So, you transition to p i k into a k j m k j. Okay, right. So, therefore, uh, then the uh, transition from k to j absorbing probability from k to j and then m k j. So, this will be uh, uh, you know trying to write down the equations for m i j. So, that we can we have a system of equations and we can solve for these uh, conditional mean first passage times. Um, so, is that okay? So, here uh, this is i to k, that means you may transition from i to another absorbing state, but then in that case, okay, and then uh, uh, no, it has to be sorry, it k is not k cannot be an absorbing state, right, because you see the you can immediately see that the argument is not correct, because uh, if you are from i to k, then uh, you cannot transition from k to j, because uh, once you are in absorbing state, then it is done. So, k is a transient state. So, you are transitioning from i to k. So, i is a transient state, k is a transient state and then you are uh, uh, 
uh, finding out the absorbing probability of going to j and m k j will be the mean uh, first passage time, right? conditional mean first passage time. That means, you want to go to j when you are in k. Okay? So, m k j into a k j into p i k. So, this you sum up where k is. So, I should not say that k is k is not equal to i. Right. So, we are saying that, because you are wanting to find the transition probability from i to j, where j is an absorbing state. And for the first time, so first passage time you are computing, mean first passage time. So, this will be that you transition from i to another transient state, then from that transient state, uh, your absorbing probability. So, a k j into m k j. So, the mean number of transitions that you will require for going from k to j, m k j. So, this gives you an equation for uh, relating the m i j's uh, with the other mean first passage times to the absorbing state j. This is the right. So, if passage to state j is certain to occur, then of course, a k j will be 1 and in, in fact, all a i j's where j is fixed will be 1. So, in that case, you see these equations will uh, transform to because this will be 1, this is 1 and this is 1. So, then if you recall your uh, equations for m i j's, uh, which you wrote down for the ergodic process, you will get the same equation mean first passage time. Right? That means, now you are considering that there is only one absorbing state and so uh, the mean first passage time equations will be valid here. Okay. So, uh, the whole idea is when you have more than one, uh, when you have more than one absorbing state, you want to look at the you want to see the uh, how to compute these mean conditional mean first passage times. So, let us say that um, you now in the uh, example that we have been all along following the fourth state example in which uh, 1 and 2 are transient and 3 and 4 are absorbing. So, um, you uh, consider the four state 4, fourth state which is um, okay, and you want to compute m 2 4. That means, you are in 2 and you uh, want to um, find out the mean first passage time uh, of uh, going to 4, to absorbing state 4. Okay. So, here if you look at this equation, let us just write it out. So, it will be a to 4, m to 4. So, now 2 cannot be equal to, um, so, uh, so when we, we, we will now take make use of the conditional uh, mean first passage time. So, I am defining m i j as conditional mean first passage time from i to j. Okay. And um, okay, I am defining the conditional mean first passage time. This may be a general uh, definition, but in particular now I want to say that suppose um, j is an absorbing state, I want to talk about that only. Okay. So, in that case, um, uh, I can write this as a i j m i j, right? because uh, uh, the uh, uh, transition probability or the absorbing probability from i to j is a i j and that into m i j the mean uh, conditional mean first passage time. Then either this transition occurs in one step or it will occur uh, that means, you will go from i to k where k. So, I need not write um, uh, here essentially I mean that k is a k is a, a transient state is transient, is a transient state. That is all I want to say. So, then this will be, uh, you may transition to another state or to itself p i k, then a k j. So, k cannot be j, that is all, uh, because j is an absorbing state. So, once I transition to j, then it is done. Uh, I do not have to. So, um, it will be p i k, that means, I transition to another transient state. From that transient state, I go to the absorbing state j. So, the probability of that into the mean first passage time from k to j. Okay. So, k is a transient state. Okay. Now, uh, if uh, passage to state j is certain, then uh, you all these absorbing probabilities are 1, right? because no matter where you are, since you know that you are going to go to j. So, uh, all these probabilities will be 1 and in that case, these equations will reduce to your um, uh, you know, computing the mean first passage times from an ergo, for an ergot, ergotic process, which we have done already. So, same equations. I mean, this will reduce to uh, the uh, equations for computing the mean first passage times for an ergotic process. Ergotic process right? So, now uh, let us uh, uh, see how we make use of uh, these equations to compute your 
uh, m i j's. So, let us consider say for example, I want to uh, compute m 2 4. So, that means, the question here that we asked how many transitions will occur before the specified absorbing state is occupied. So, of course, I will compute m 2 4 then m 1 4 also and the sum will tell me. So, that means, your uh, to answer that question it will be m 1 4 plus m 2 4 that will tell me uh, the uh, mean number of transitions that are required before I occupy state 4. This is what we want to compute. Okay. So, um, let us just write down the uh, equations here. So, A 2 4 into M 2 4, this can be equal to A 2 4, which is actually 1 times A 2 4 plus, then from 2 I can transition to 1, which is a transient state, then A 1 4 into M 1 4, or I can transition from 2 to 2. So, P 2 2, then A 2 4 and M 2 4. So, this is clear, right. Similarly, if uh, I want to look at m 1 4, then it will be a 1 4 into m 1 4, then 1 into a 1 4. So, I will again transition from 1 to 4 uh, and uh, this will be, uh, uh, yeah. So, this will be in one step and then uh, I mean the mean first passage time will be 1 plus p 1 1 a 1 4 m 1 4 plus p 1 2 a 2 4 and m 2 4. Okay. So, here again you from 1 you can transition to itself or you can transition to 2. So, if you transition to 1, then again you want to compute a 1 4 and then this will be m 1 4 plus uh, p 1 2 into a 2 4 m 2 4. So, this is the conditional um, mean first passage times that we are computing, but if, if I am in 1, then uh, I can uh, transition to 4. So, what is the conditional probability? Right. So, now substituting for p i j's, I should not say p i j substituting for a i j s. And so, remember we had uh, for this thing we had computed the matrix A and if you look back at the matrix A, it is uh, the numbers are given to you. So, a 1 4 for example, there a 2 4 is 3 by 5, then this was 3 by 5 plus 1 by 3 uh, your uh, uh, this was 1, this was 1 a 1 4 was 1 by 5, then 1 by 3 was p 2 1. So, anyway you, you had the uh, matrix this and you had the matrix uh, the transition matrix p also the transition diagram. So, looking at those if you can just revert back to a few uh, frames uh, earlier, then you have all these numbers and so by substituting there I get uh, these two equations and then uh, solving them sim easily uh, gives me the answer that m 2 4 is 93 by 45 and m 1 4 is 153 by, uh, it should be 45 only by 43. Right. Okay. So, as I was saying that uh, now, if you want to look at the m 1 4 plus m 2 4, then this is equal to 93 plus 153, 45 and this will be uh, 6. 45. So, on the average the mean number of conditional that means, uh, if uh, transitioning to 4. So, the number of transitions that will be required a mean number would be 246 by 45, provided you are uh, transitioning to the absorbing state 4. Okay. So, one can uh, you know I have tried to uh, look at uh, these processes in uh, different ways and giving you interpretations. And so, uh, you know, given a physical process, there are a lot of these kinds of questions because you want to know uh, if one has to plan, then one has to know, for example, if these are reducible Markov chains. That means, uh, you know, which the processes which will terminate uh, uh, in short time. Then you want to have an idea about these numbers these so that uh, you know can you can plan accordingly. And let us hope that uh, uh, in future after having gone through this, you will be coming across such situations or such processes, where then you can look at them in a more meaningful way. Okay. So, I will now uh, discuss uh, exercise. So, let us look at question 1. This is a particle moves. Uh, by the way, these questions I have, I have taken from uh, the book Hillier and Lieberman the reference to which uh, will be given to you at the end of the course. So, a particle moves on a circle through points that have been marked 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 in a clockwise order. Okay. So, um, and the particle starts at point 0. 
So, let us see, um, I can just, so here is a circle and you have 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, this and the idea is that you can either move from here to here or you can move uh, backwards. So, at, at each step, the particle starts at point 0, at each step it has probability 0 0.5 of moving uh, the point clockwise. So, clockwise would mean this way or 0 0.5 of moving one point counterclockwise. That means, either backwards or forwards and the, both the probabilities are the same. So, you remember this was your, uh, we were looking at the, uh, we were looking at the um, random walk. We were looking at the random walk and when we said that probability is half, then uh, we also showed that it will be uh, it will be an ergodic process, because in that case uh, all the states will be recurrent, right. So, the same situation. Now, let x n uh, denote its location on this circle after step n. Hmm? x n is a Markov chain. So, we have already seen that this will be a Markov chain, because it will just depend on where you are. So, that you know the probability of transitioning to the next step will just depend on where you are, it will not depend how you reach there. So, this will be a Markov chain. Now, construct the one step transition matrix, you can do it, right. So, it will be um, a 5 by 5 matrix. Then determine the n step transition matrix P n for n equal to 5, 10, 20, 40, 80. Now, I have given up to 80, but just because you can, you can either because I, you must be familiar with MATLAB or by writing a small program of your own, then you can iteratively find out, um, multiply, get the power of p raise to 5, p raise to 10, p raise to 20 and so on. So, just to familiarize yourself. Then determine the steady state probabilities of the state of the Markov chain. Now, uh, so okay, this is a little, uh, uh, may, may become tedious, because you are solving a 5 by 5, uh, uh, you, the transition matrix is 5 by 5. So, you will have 5 variables and 5 equations, but since uh, the values of p's are half. So, therefore, uh, it should not be a difficult uh, uh, system to solve, you should get the answer quickly. Right? So, determine the steady state probabilities of the state of the Markov chain, describe how the probabilities in the n step transition matrices obtained in part b compared to these steady state probabilities and as n grows large. So, want to show, see that you should feel the, so once you find out the uh, uh, steady state probabilities and you also have uh, you know like p raise to uh, 40 or 80, then you can see that um, in fact, um, at uh, p uh, n equal to 80, that means when you have uh, p 80, p raise to 80, then they should uh, definitely be very, very close to your uh, steady state probabilities. And in fact, you can see the pattern even when you compute p 40. Okay. Now, um, question 2 is just to determine the period of each of the states in the Markov chain that has the. Uh, yeah. So, here uh, you have again a 5 by 5 matrix and I am asking you to determine the period of each of the states in the Markov chain that has the following transition matrix. So, this will be a, uh, all the states are periodic. Uh, well, you should find out. Okay. So, uh, you have to then determine the period. That means, you will have to compute p square, p cube and so here also you can make use of the same program that you wrote uh, for b and then you can compute p square, p cube and so determine to determine the uh, uh, periods of the uh, periodic states. Uh, yeah. Now, question 3, a transition matrix p is said to be doubly stochastic if the sum over each column equals 1. So, you know for uh, the transition matrix that we have seen, the rows must add up to 1. So, now I am giving you an additional uh, condition and that is that the columns also add up to 1. So, therefore, p i j as um, i varies from 0 to m uh, is also 1, right. So, column sums are 1. In that case, such a chain is irreducible, aperiodic and consists of m plus 1 states, right. The, uh, states are already m plus 1. Show that your steady state probabilities in such a case, you do not have to do any computations, just right away you will be able to show that your pi j's are 1 upon m plus 1 for j varying, j varying from 0 to m. Okay. So, this is simply you can do it orally, but write down a few things and then make your make out your. Okay. So, this is now 
Oh, this is uh, okay. Now, question four: A computer is inspected at the end of every hour. It is found to be either working, which means up, or failed down. If the computer is found to be up, the probability of its remaining, of its remaining up for the next hour is 0 0.9. If it is down, the computer is repaired, which may require more than one hour. Whenever the computer is down, regardless of how long it has been down, the probability of it still being down one hour later is 0 0.35. So, that means, your uh, unit of time is 1 hour and then you have to write down your uh, uh, transition matrix. So, construct the one step transition matrix for this Markov chain okay. and find the mu i j the expected first passage time from state i to state j for all i and j. Okay. So, this you will be able to do. So, here I have asked you to now uh, sort of this question depends on computing the first passage times which we have also discussed quite thoroughly. Okay. Now, the question 5, which I told you in the lecture uh, uh, is uh, you know uh, the, based on the gambler's ruin problem and, uh, and so, um, I thought that I leave the computations to you uh, for uh, I just explained to you how the what the problem is. So, now here oh, okay, gambler bets there should have been a uh, you know, space between. The, so, now this is a gambler bets dollar okay, here it is dollar 1 on each play of a game because this is again from Hillier and Lieberman. Each time he has a probability p of winning and probability uh, p, uh, probability p of winning and probability uh, q which is 1 minus p of losing the uh, dollar bet. He will continue to play until he goes broke or nets a fortune of t dollars. Now, let x n denote the number of dollars possessed by the gambler after the nth play of the game. Then you want to find out um, x n minus x n plus 1 will be x n plus 1 with probability p, right? because he has one more rupee if he wins and that is with probability p. Otherwise, he will have x n minus 1 with probability q which is 1 minus p. Now, here of course, he continues playing only if his x n is less than t and uh, x n plus 1 will be x n for x n 0 or t, right? because if he has no money then he cannot play and therefore, uh, he cannot bet and so, he continues to be in the same state that is means he continues to be broke. And if he has uh, t uh, dollars, he has earned t dollars, then again he does not play, because he has earned his fortune. Okay. Now, x n is a Markov chain, we have already discussed this. The gambler starts with x naught dollars, where x naught is a positive integer less than t. So, as I said, you can say that x naught is i. Construct the one step transition matrix of the Markov chain. So, this you will have to write down, right? and you can see that it will only be one step forward or one step backward, the other entries will be zeros. Now, uh, find the classes of the Markov chain, these I have already told you. Let t equal to 3 and p equal to 0 0.3. So, if uh, it is a question of uh, earning up to 3 dollars. So, that means, uh, your states will be um, uh, 0, 1, 2 and 3. So, then I have asked you to find out the um, first passage probabilities f 1 0, f 1 t f 2 0 and f 2 t and then again uh, the same things when p is 0 0.7. So, um, it will be not difficult at all if you write down uh, see again the computations uh, the formulas are given to you for the first passage probabilities and so once you write down the transition matrix you should be able to complete the problem. Okay. So, uh, in the lecture I had told you that we will you will I will be asking you to compute the probability that the gambler will end up with uh, rupees t or in the, in the lecture it was I think uh, rupees n or dollars n whatever it is does not matter. That means, the uh, gambler with uh, what is the probability that he will earn the fortune that he is uh, wanting to. Uh, so, that has not been asked in this question 5, but you see um, you should be able to set up equations. So, essentially it is uh, just define the probability p i p i minus 1. So, you can interpret the same way and then it will be p i is equal to p p i plus 1 plus q p i minus 1 and then you multiply p i by p plus q because p plus q is 1 and then in from this equation you have an iterative relationship for different values of i and then you can find out uh, you can find out the um, uh, iterative relation and then you will be able to find out the probability p i and there of course you will use the fact that um, 
uh, if you have 0 dollars, then the probability of making your fortune is 0. And if you have, uh, or you have earned uh, t dollars, then your p, p t, p t is 1. So, using these uh, initial and boundary, uh, boundary conditions, you will be able to solve for p i's. So, please do that, uh, because in the problem, I have not asked you to do it, but you can certainly do it. Okay. Okay. Now, question 6, hmm. question 6 is, uh, which is again a simple one. A leading brewery on the west coast uh, labeled A has hired an OR analyst to analyze its market position. If it is particularly concerned about its major competitor, let us say labeled B. So, another brewery which is the competitor for this uh, brewery A uh, and so they want to find out uh, how good a competitor or how bad a competitor uh, this uh, other brewery is. So, the analyst believes that brand switching can be modeled as a Markov chain using three states with state A and B representing customers drinking beer produced from the aforementioned breweries and state C representing all other brands. Okay. So, um, you know uh, state A will represent. So, that means, A to A in this uh, the transition matrix that was given below. So, say the probability of A that means, somebody who is taking using the uh, you know uh, beer from uh, from brewery A uh, will continue to do that use the brewery A only is 0 0.7, but may switch to B with probability 0 0.2 or to other brands with probability 0 0.1. Similarly, you have the you can explain the row B entries right and then C for other brands then they switch to A will be 0 0.1 and uh, 0 0.2 0 0.1 again to B and uh, 0 0.8 that means, they continue with the same uh, brand that they are con, uh, already using is 0 0.8. So, that uh, point is missing here and we just uh, you can do the make the entry. So, 0 0.8 right. Now, what are the steady state market shares for the two major breweries? So, we want you to find out pi 1, pi 2 and pi 3. So, the answers that they are asking for is pi 1 and pi 2. So, what are the steady state market shares for the two major? That means, when the process has gone on for some time, you think that the choices have all stabilized, then you want to know uh, the steady state uh, market shares for the two major breweries.